So good day all and welcome to my South African lawn. Okay, lekker. So welcome to today's video. Before we get into step, uh, I think it's three of this massive renovation. I uh, just quickly want to show you what the results was of this invasive grasses removal or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that area right there I've already filled in. But these ones are left so you can see them first. So there's a couple of like deep holes, probably like 10 centimeters deep um, holes. That one I filled in already. I'm, I'm going to try and fill them in all in today with um, sand or soil. Um, so that they can settle and I don't have so much settling going on after I've put down seed or as it's recovering um, so it stays as level as possible but there's actually quite a lot more of this quirk or was quite a lot more of this quirk around than I initially thought um, so I had to remove quite a lot of my actual existing Kentucky bluegrass uh, where the quirk was invading and, and so on um, but yeah, that'll recover. I'm not too worried. Temperatures are peaking at the moment for this Kentucky bluegrass lawn. You can see the color looks great. Um, it's not a great time of the day. It's like in the middle of the day to film. Um, so in the mornings and in the evenings or late afternoons, it is looking beautiful. Um, but yeah, without wasting any further time, let's get into today's video. Whew. Yeah, so the previous video, I had a little bit of a, like a thing there in the beginning of the video complaining about how bad it was raking this lawn and um, firstly that was that was more aimed towards yes look I was tired but it was more like aimed towards a joke um, but I really want to thank the guys giving me some sympathy um, yeah you guys thanks for for feeling my pain it was really actually quite hard work and also thanks to my siblings I'm the youngest of four children and they still see me as a baby. Uh, after that video, they made a real mockery of me, uh, complaining in a video. Yeah, Merrick, you're such a baby, doing a little bit of lawn work and complaining. You're such a baby. Yeah, that exact one that you see in my Instagram videos that says, Go cuckoo you, go cuckoo you. She's the one instigating all this babying of me. Um, almost 30 years old, guys. Come on, grow up. Um, Get yourself on my lawn, come and work here. Yeah? I'll show you what hard work is. Okay, so sorry about all the grinding and, and whatnot, guys. Uh, the neighbors are also quite as busy as I am um, doing all types of renovations. I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm not peeking over their walls. Anyways, so you probably saw this and you're thinking, woohoo, Merrick, today we are doing a top dress and you are 100% wrong. I had to put that there because uh, we're supplying some of, I think it's soldiers, uh, with some beds. I'm not 100% sure. There's a bit of a middleman. So I had to offload everything that I had on the trailer here so I can deliver those beds and stuff tomorrow. No, actually this afternoon. Um, so that's the, today's video is all about hey, hey, this puppy. And I'm just going to show you uh, what I've done to it. And then we'll talk about what we're doing in this video. Cool. Okay, lacquer. So a couple of tine modifications after a couple of tests I've come to a conclusion. Just a couple of tine modifications before we hit the hollow tining. Okay Owens, cake doll. Just have a look there. What a work of art. I've said it in a previous video. I really should have become an engineer. The things that I come up with, I mean the signs behind that thing. But just look first, just look how beautiful this thing is. It is manufactured to perfection. And now all the grapjes op a stokkie, all jokes aside, let's look at the signs behind holotining and this specific product that I've got here. Okay guys, so just have a look there. Um, that is a manual holotine machine. Um, so it also takes quite a lot of hard work, but we'll get into that now. But why did I build something like that? The main reason is um, only our golf courses really use holotining machines. I, have, I don't think I've ever seen someone use a holotiner 
in my area i've seen it on other youtube videos guys using it on their lawns i haven't seen anyone in my area use a holotina on their lawn and that's why i've built it um, and the main difference between that and a normal garden fork is the garden fork allows you to make holes and let water and oxygen and fertilizer get into the soil but a garden fork doesn't necessarily relieve compaction okay so that's the main reason why i've built that so it pulls a core out of the actual soil um, so that's why i've built that hollow tie now i'm going to show you what i've did um, to make it a little bit easier to use and also to make it a little bit more effective pulling the soil out of the ground and i've conveyed a couple of tests but let's have a look at what i did there Okay, so as you can see, it's a one, two, three, four tine hollow tiner. Um, and what I did was I actually had it as a complete round tine, but as you saw in that video, I cut half of it off um, because it just makes it easier to push into the ground. Firstly, because it's a manual one, it is a little bit more like uh, labor intensive to get this thing around a lawn of a size of this maybe 200 squares or whatever so it makes it a little bit easier to push in and also I had better success during my tests um, of the actual soil pulling out and as you push it back in pushing it back out so what I did here is I cut half of the tine off so it's basically a, a C tine or a half hollow tine or whatever and then I just welded a little bit of a slide um, so that the soil when you push it into the ground again slides up that slide and pops out not very neat guys i'm not a very good welder i'm not a very good anything uh, but this is basically what it looks like and um, it actually works surprisingly well okay guys so here i am at a bit that i did yesterday afternoon it's probably about 15 squares if i'm guessing doesn't matter really i just want to show you um i worked about 10 minutes yesterday just going over this area and I just want to show you what the science is behind pulling out a core out of the ground so basically what happens is um, as you stick it into the ground um, it pulls out a core which doesn't fall out immediately and as you push it into the next hole this core gets pushed out of that tine there and it leaves you with something like this obviously this is dried out now over the past few hours and that's what I want. I want to actually remove something from the soil to relieve compaction. It will allow water, air, nutrients, oxygen, everything to get down into the soil um, where it matters at the root system. Um, and it's a great time of the year to do it, but I'm going to show you how it works now. Uh, hopefully we'll get a good camera angle of that thing in practice. And I did this yesterday so you don't have to hear me talking while I'm sweating and huffing and puffing. Pleasure. Only a pleasure. Okay guys, so when, when you're done, it's going to look something like this. And I absolutely love the look of it because you can see the cores that's popped out. It's lying there. Um, and it doesn't remove as much as the full hollow tine would have removed. So the C tine does a bit of a half job, but it's the easier way for me to do it. I was struggling so much to get the soil to push through the tine uh, with that full round tine. So this just works easier for me and it pokes into the soil so easy i promise you um I, it's actually ridiculous how easy it is it works easier than a garden fork for me um i think because there's no pressure it just slices around the edges and it pushes that sand through and you won't believe me uh, the firmer the soil gets and that's why i'm doing it on this lawn especially the firmer the soil gets it actually works more effective it takes a little bit more effort but it works more effective because there's more pressure of pushing that core out of that sea tine and sliding it out um, so it works brilliant for me and the reason why i've actually built this thing i was 100 percent happy with my garden fork method just poking holes allowing water and air to get down into the soil with all my kukuyu lawns um, i've done it many times before uh, but this lawn is so compact and i'm so dissatisfied with the type of soil that's here i'm actually upset that i didn't put proper soil like a, uh, a 100 mil soil layer here before i planted this i'm so dissatisfied with the soil here so i really want to try and remove something to create space for me to add whatever it is compost 
whatever I want to put down into that soil to amend the soil. Um, so that's why I really wanted to get something to pull cores out and allow a cavity there for me to add whatever I want down into the soil. I'm obviously going to use it now on my kakuyu, but a normal garden fork works well on that areas for me uh, because that's not very compacted. I only want to create that holes. That soil there in the front of the yard is so much softer. I don't know if it's weathered to do with this mountain rocks or whatever that's here, but the soil here is terrible and I really want to amend it. That's why I was so encouraged to build something like that. Okay, so in preparation for doing something like that, whether it is like a tine type of thing like that or a standard garden fork where you're just pressing holes into the soil um, you really want to water your lawn thoroughly I mean I want to say you need to add about 20 mils of water over this area um, so that that water soaks deep into the soil and softens it up to make your job a lot easier for yourself I mean doing this on dry soil will be just back breaking um, so water it properly and then give it a, at least a couple of hours or a day um, I would like water the previous day for just that water, water to drain away because if the water is still lying there it creates a lot of mud and it clogs up the whole thing especially with that tine with a garden fork it's not that bad because there's not a lot of mud that can stick to it um, but just give it some time to drain through uh, because you don't want that mud pulling that mud out the whole time it clogs up the whole system just doesn't work as well just allow it to drain away for uh, some hours or a day Okay, so I've done this one, two, three, a little bit more than three times. One, two, three, four, five, about five, three times five, about uh, 16, about 18. Or, done almost 20 square meters in total, yeah. I've got about just under 200 square meters to do. Um, so I'll give you an update in the next video. I think I'm going to wrap the video up right there. And then, yeah, lacquer. Next video is not going to take about five days. I think it's going to be out in about two days. Um, so you don't have to wait too long because it's a top dress. And if that lies on the lawn for too long, then uh, I might have some parts dying off there. And the lockdown days are getting a little bit limited at the moment. So I need to get this renovation really under the belt. And let's get it growing perfectly for the winter. Okay, lacquer. So I've done, like I say, roughly 20 square meters there thank you so much for watching the video i'm going to wrap it up right here um I'm, like i said i'm giving an update in the next video as to what the progress was on this one um but i don't think it's going to be that hard work not as hard as the power raking or that the thatching or whatever um keep in mind that this all of this whole process or the whole renovation is applicable to kukuyu lawns maybe not the the raking those runners just going to be too difficult to go through um but i have got a kukuyu renovation video out it's about 10 videos back i did it in october november somewhere there um so going to have a look at that if you wanted to that's all in one video quite a long video uh but all in one video so but everything i do here 
is more or less applicable on Kukuyu lawns. There's nothing too hectic. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting, liking. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider that. Um, click the bell icon. You know how it works. Um, yes, I hope you've learned something in this video, and I will see you in the next video. And just uh, a final note, um, I hope everyone is staying safe during these testing and trying times, um, trying to keep it as light-minded or keep it jokey to get not too serious so i hope you enjoy that don't take any offense i'm not taking this uh coronavirus thing lightly i hope everyone is staying safe um it's uh, such a difficult time the economy is bad we're going to suffer for the next uh while i'm guessing probably a couple of years but uh, we'll get through it as long as we all survive this um thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video cheers for now bye bye Boo. I know I've promised to take good care of you. I'm just, we have to make holes in you. It's like, uh, it's like humans have heart problems and then someone has to cut them open and repair veins and things like that. I have to push holes into you to make you better. I promise, I still care about you. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't get sad. You're making me sad. I don't want to get it's just temporary it's only a week you're gonna feel bad okay <laughs>